Imagine one day that I decide to give you a million dollars as a gift. Now you'd be quite ecstatic, I'm sure. I come over to my car, I have several briefcases full of cash, and I give it to you. I tell you, here, this is yours, my gift to you. But there is one rule that you must follow with this money. You can't spend it. You can't invest it. You can just keep the money. And if you do spend it, even one dime, I will kill you. Would you consider my gift to be great or glorious or fantastic, or would you consider it a waste of time and just a waste of space and a useless gift? Now, God gave everyone free will, the ability to make choices to do whatever we want to in life. But there's a catch. We can't use it. You see, a friend of mine defined sin in a way that I'm sure most Christians here will agree with. He said, sin is anything that is contrary to the will of God. So we have this all-powerful, almighty being who says, here is this great gift. I want you to have the free will to do whatever you want. Instead of making you a robot to do exactly what I tell you to, I'm going to give you the choice to do whatever you want. But if you don't do exactly what I tell you to, I'm going to burn you in hell forever. Much like a million dollars sitting there in briefcases or suitcases in your living room that you can't touch, you can't spend, you can't invest, you just have to let it sit there. Free will is just as useless. If you use it and you make choices of your own, you're going to be damned. If you act like a robot and do exactly what God tells you to, and do exactly what he wants you to, then you'll be rewarded and then you're going to go to heaven where you get to continue to act like a robot doing everything that God wants you to and using his will instead of your own. So here's my question. What's the point of free will if we're not allowed to use it? Hello everybody, Neosentience1 here. Um, tough questions for Christians number three. What is the point of free will if we are not allowed to use it? It's another straw man. Now, I don't just call everything a straw man unless they really are. Um, but here's why this one is a straw man. Number one, the analogy is not an example of Christianity. Maybe Judaism or Islam or even Catholicism where works earn your heaven. Needless to say, these are all wrong. In Christianity, this is number two, in Christianity, we do use our free will, and that's what makes us a Christian. Allow me to elaborate. In Christianity, we rejoice in the redeeming atonement of Christ. He is our Savior, if even from ourselves. Even the angels were given free will, but they have to deal with the consequences. They have the choice to be for God or against Him. One decision is wise, while the other is not. We have the same choice and the free will to make it. If I made a campfire and it grew big and hot, you have the free will to choose whether you're going to stick your face deep in it or not. One choice is wise, the other is foolish. If you stuck your head in the flames, would you then blame me for the choice you made? The plan from the beginning was to have a Savior, a Redeemer who would let us know His full glory and love for us. Had we not free will, we would just be robots. God can create a thousand universes full of robot, remote control beings if He chose to do so, but they, would, they wouldn't know love, mercy, grace, or choice. God made us, and we have free will. We can choose to align with God or oppose Him. Now remember, one decision is wise, the other is foolish. Who in their right mind would oppose the Alpha and Omega? He has the power to create and thus the power to destroy. Since we are born into sin, we are godless heathens by nature. We choose to be against Him. We want our own way. We are the children of the devil. But the Lord shows us mercy and grace and stays his hand of wrath which would otherwise destroy us for our hatred of him he sends messengers into our lives he makes his word known he makes himself known to those who seek him as we learn and turn from our wicked ways we can see the mercy he has had on us all these years and we can know the grace he has blessed us with we can know compassion, we can know redemption. Another example, if the one million dollar analogy was posed to Christians, it should be, if I gave you one million dollars and told you to spend it how you see fit, but you must deal with the consequences, we would then have wise versus foolish choices to make. Are you going to spend it all on some hookers and drugs and live crazy for a few months? Or will you invest it in buying a home and building a family? The thing is, we don't have to go into it blind. The instruction manual has all the answers. We know the destination of each path. 
just make a choice. One is wise, the other is 